Okay. So in this video, we are going to learn about the terminology minimum attractive rate of return for the first time. And we are going to refer to the problem that we have seen in the beginning of this chapter. So you see, we have to, we have to purchase a certain product from a company and there are different options that we can pay the price of the product. So let me show that problem to you. So we can either pay in the first or second or in the third option, as you can see, and we have different payment plans. And we have said that if you have a pertinent interest rate that is assumed as an 8%, the present value of the option one is the smallest, but if you have 12% pertinent interest rate that is assumed, then option third, the third option's present value is the smallest. And you see, depending on the pertinent interest rate that you assume, another option may be preferable. So under which interest rate, under which interest rate we need to compare the different options of cash flows? Or if you are going to evaluate a project, under which interest rate you need to evaluate is, we need to answer this question, okay? So that interest rate, that pertinent interest rate, which in which you are going to evaluate a project or that target rate or the cutoff rate or valuation rate is called the minimum attractive rate of return, which is subjective to the company. Okay, to the party who evaluates it. This minimum attractive rate of return is abbreviated as MAR. Therefore, in the future courses, in the future videos, if I refer this terminology as MAR, you need to understand that I am mentioning about the minimum attractive rate of return. So MAR is basically a terminology which is used by each company or each party to evaluate alternative project investments or alternative options of cash flows, okay? So the pertinent interest rate that you need to use when comparing alternative cash flows is called the minimum attractive rate of return. But everybody or every company has a different mark, different minimum attractive rate of return. So the minimum attractive rate of return or the mark is affected by the general company policy. So different companies may have different Mars, okay? For example, if a company is uh, interested in uh, aggressive expansion, in that case, the minimum attractive rate of return that they are going to define should be larger than ordinary values, okay? But if a company is not interested in taking too much risk, then minimum attractive rate of return that they define can be smaller. And also the minimum attractive rate of return can also be determined by the risk associated with the project. So if you are going to evaluate a certain project, the minimum attractive rate of return that you assume can be uh, defined by that project as well. For example, a company compare projects or evaluate projects under a minimum attractive rate of return of 15%. However, if the projects are too risky, then they may assume a 25% minimum attractive rate of return as well. Okay, so depending on the project type or the general company policy, the company, the minimum attractive rate of return can be changed. But one thing that we surely know is the minimum attractive rate of return of any company should be higher than the cost of raising capital. So how do they raise the capital? By the methods that we have covered in this course, either by taking a loan, either by selling stocks or uh, selling bonds or reinvesting their own profits. So when they are going to evaluate a certain project to invest in, they need to evaluate that project under a minimum attractive rate of return value. And if that minimum attractive rate of return is less than the cost of raising capital, then they cannot make any profit because the way that raise capital is much more costly than they are going to get as a profit from a project. Therefore, the minimum attractive rate of return should always be higher or at least 
equal to the cost of raising capital. This is an important issue. And this is why we have learned the concept of cost of raising capital, because no company can have a minimum attractive rate of return that is less than the cost of how they raised capital. Okay, even though the minimum attractive rate of return or the pertinent interest rate that they are going to use to evaluate projects is defined by the company policy and the associated risk with the project, it can never be less than the cost of the capital. So here's the thing. Now, we would like to determine a minimum attractive rate of return to evaluate the project investments for ABC Corporation. And ABC Corporation is going to invest in a project which costs $100,000. So if, you, if they want to invest in this project, they really need to have $100,000 right now. Now, we are interested in determining the minimum attractive rate of return to evaluate this project. Now, what we need to look for is how they have raised this $100,000, how they are going to find this $100,000. So according to the question, this corporation raised $20,000 of this $100,000 by selling stocks. So they are going to sell $20,000 worth of stock. $30,000 will be obtained by issuance of bonds. They will sell bonds in the stock market also from $30,000, uh, uh, which will bring a uh, current cash of $30,000. And according to the previous questions that we have solved in the earlier videos, the cost of the capital through stocks were 10.50% and the cost of capital for bonds were 10.52%. So this question is related from with the previous questions, question number two and question number three. Because ABC company sells stocks which have a cost of the capital of 10.5, and they have sold bonds which have a cost of capital from as 10.52. So these values are already obtained from these earlier questions. Now you need to be careful. All these three questions could have been asked as a single question. Okay. You need to be very careful. All of them could have been asked as a single but a large size question. Now they have obtained 50,000, half of the initial cost of the project. So how about the other $50,000? So for the balance, for the remaining $50,000 of these $100,000, $10,000 will be borrowed from a bank at an annual interest rate of 12%. So you see, if they want to take a loan from a bank, the annual interest rate is a lot larger than the cost of the capital obtained from the sale of stocks and sale of bonds. So 12%, interest rate is the cost of the capital of this $10,000. You see, the bank's loan has a larger cost of the capital. If this value were smaller than the cost of the capital of selling stocks or selling bonds, in that case, the company wouldn't sell stocks or sell bonds. They would take the loan from the bank totally. But unfortunately, the cost of the capital of the loans are usually greater than the cost of the capital of bonds or stocks. Okay. Otherwise, otherwise, selling stocks or selling bonds would not be a logical idea. And finally, the remaining $40,000 of $100,000 will be reinvested from last year's profits. So the question here is this. What is the project's cost of the capital? So we know the cost of the capital of $20,000 is 10.5. The cost of the capital of this $30,000 is 10.52. The cost of the capital for this $10,000 is 12%. And the cost of the capital for this $40,000 is not zero, even though it is their own profit. We have said previously that the cost of the capital cost of the capital for using their own profits should never be less than the cost of the capital of stock. Therefore, we will assume that the cost of the capital for this $40,000 is also at least 10.50%. Okay, and we are just uh, assuming optimistically it is 10.50%. The cost of the capital will be calculated by 
taking a weighted average of the cost of the capital from each method of capital source. So we have different methods of raising capital here. Each will have different cost of the capital. As you can see, the reinvestment of our own profits will have the cost of the capital of 10.5, same as the cost of the capital of the stock. But because we are obtaining different shares of our $100,000 of capital with different methods, we are just going to take a weighted average of these cost of the capital with these values. Therefore, we will see that the cost of the capital of this project or these $100,000 is 10.66. Okay, so if somebody asks us the cost of the capital of these $100,000 for this project, it is 10.66 depending on the methods that we have used to raise this capital and also the cost of the capital of each method. Now, the, the second question is much easier. What minimum at the rate of return should be used to evaluate this project. So under which minimum attractive rate of return we need to evaluate this project? What we know is the minimum attractive rate of return to evaluate this project must never be less than the cost of the capital of this project. Okay, because we have already said that right here in this presentation. So we have said that the minimum attractive rate of return to evaluate any project must certainly be higher than the cost of raising that capital. If the cost of raising that capital is 10.66%, then if we are going to evaluate the project or alternative cash flow options of this project, we need to evaluate these under a 10.66% interest rate. So the minimum attractive rate of return should be larger than 10.66%. However, the definition of minimum attractive rate of return is not just dependent on the cost of the capital. Again, it is dependent on the company's policy and also the risk associated with the invested project. For example, a mining company is considering diversification into plastics. They need to, in that case, they need to use a higher interest rate to evaluate such a project than it would use for a new mining project. Why? Because a mining company knows about mining, okay? A new mining project is not a risky project. As long as the minimum attractive rate of return to evaluate it is larger than 10.66, they can use that minimum attractive rate of return to, for evaluation, okay? However, if they are going to make a diversification into another industry, such as plastics industry, then this is an in, a risky project for them, okay? So they are uh, basically uh, having a risk of entering a new venture. They do not know the un, uh, market factors, okay? They do not know the market factors there, and they do not know the, exp they do not have the experience regarding to plastics industry. Therefore, this is a risky project for them. If they are going to evaluate that project, they definitely need to use a minimum attractive rate of return, not just higher than a smaller amount, higher small uh, with a smaller amount than 10.66. They need to use a minimum attractive rate of return, which is larger than the ordinary minimum attractive rate of return. Okay. So what we know about the minimum attractive rate of return so far is it should be definitely greater than the cost of the capital, but how great than that? It depends on the risk of the project that they are trying to evaluate. All right. So we are just going to learn one final concept that is called the fair market value. And we are going to explain these concepts using one of the examples that we have solved earlier. Remember question number three, B, part B. So I'm just going to go back to that. Question number three, B. Remember, we have a bond which is sold through $830, which is paying dividends in each half year at $20. And in the end of five years, it pays $1,000 of face value. And in part B, we have asked this question, is this bond a good buy for an investor who expects a 9% annual return? Okay. Now you see 
these 830 dollars were a large price why because for somebody who expects a nine percent if you remember for somebody who expects a nine percent return per year the maximum amount that person would like to pay should be 809.12 dollars if that person pays a larger amount than this in that case the investment will not return the expected investment expected return of nine percent therefore the investment would not be a good investment okay so this 809.12 dollars is the maximum amount that this person would like to pay to this bond otherwise the the, uh, the desired return would not be obtained so therefore this 809 point twelve dollars is the fair market value for that person for that individual that is the maximum amount that this person would like to pay for this uh, bond if the bond price is larger than this maximum amount or the fair market value of this investor then this investor would never purchase this bond okay so every product is a fair market value like this and this fair market value is dependent on the party who would like to purchase that product and just like that every investment also have a, a fair market value okay now we can use the concept of equivalence as in this question to determine the maximum amount a person or company is willing to bid on a desired property or equipment and this is called the fair market value of an asset which is which is basically the maximum amount a person or company is willing to bid on a desired property now let's calculate the fair market value for the following product a house now in question three part b we have calculated the fair market value so let me show that again in question three part b we have calculated the fair market value for that person for this bond the bonds fair market value for that person who expects a nine percent return per year is eight hundred and nine dollars however because the price of the bond is larger than that this person wouldn't buy buy this uh, bond now we are going to make these calculations for another product such a house such as a house a house is being advertised for sale by the owner an investor estimates that the property could be rented out for six hundred dollars per month taxes and minor maintenance expenses are estimated at twelve hundred dollars per year the house has been recently remodeled and the tenant should have to pay all the utilities the investor thinks he could sell the house for eight five thousand dollars after five years what is the largest amount that the investor can offer for the property if that investor's minimum attractive rate of return is 12 percent which compounds monthly now here's the thing this is a complicated question but we need to understand it analyze it sentence by sentence first of all first of all this person would like to purchase this house okay but the question is asking what what is the largest amount that this person can offer if this person expects a 12 percent minimum attractive rate of return per year so remember minimum attractive rate of return is always defined for yearly terms however that value should be compounded monthly so this is a nominal minimum attractive rate of return this 12 percent is a nominal minimum attractive rate of return only per year but this person expects a monthly compounding from that minimum attractive rate of return so the question is asking what is the maximum amount that this investor would like to pay because if that person pays more than this maximum amount that 12 percent minimum attractive rate of return which compounds monthly will not be achieved this yield will not be achieved so this person what is the maximum amount that this person would like to pay is basically asking what is the fair market value for this house for this person under a 12 percent minimum attractive rate of return that compounds monthly now 
what are the costs of this house and what are the expectations, future expectations? So here, here are the things. If this person purchases this house, this person is going to rent this house from $600 per month. So in the end of each month, this person expects to get a $600. But other than that, in the end of each year, this person is expected to pay $1,200 as taxes of this house and the maintenance expenses. But these are going to be paid yearly. And other than that, the other type of utility costs are going to be paid by the tenant, not the owner. So the person who rents this house are going to pay for the utilities, of course. Therefore, these are not going to introduce any cash flows or transactions. And in the end of five years, this person is going to sell the house from eight five thousand dollars so first of all in this question the minimum attractive rate of return is 12 percent but nominal the effective minimum attractive rate of return per month is one percent therefore the minimum attractive rate of return per month the payment period is one percent and of course if we are going to evaluate the annual effective, yearly effective minimum attractive rate of return, we need to multiply the compound, monthly compound factor for the minimum attractive return with itself 12 times and subtract one from that. The effective minimum attractive rate of return per year would be 12.68%. So according to this description, nominal minimum attractive rate of return, which compounds monthly, the effective minimum attractive rate of return per month is 1%. The effective minimum attractive rate of return per year is 12.68%. So now under this minimum attractive rate of return, if we calculate the present value of the future cash flows, we are going to be evaluating the fair market value for this person. Now you see, in the future, there will be three different types of cash flows. First of all, in the end of each month, the owner of the house is going to get $600 of rent. For how many years? For five years. So how many months does it make? 60 months, right? For five years, this person is going to get $600 in the end of each month for 60 months. So under an effective monthly minimum attractive rate of return, we are going to calculate the present value of these monthly rents. Other than that, in the end of five years, this house will be sold from eight five thousand dollars And therefore, we need to multiply eight five thousand dollars with a single payment present worth factor for five years under a yearly effective interest rate. Remember, the yearly effective interest rate is 12.68%. So that is our yearly minimum attractive rate of return. And also, we have five years of maintenance costs and the taxes. In the end of each year, we are going to pay $1,200. These are not going to be obtained revenues from this investment. These are also costs. Therefore, we need to subtract the present value of these transactions. So $1,200 in the end of each year for five years should be discounted to the present value by multiplying it with the uniform series present word factor under five years and the minimum attractive rate of return, effective minimum attractive rate of return per year. Now, the uniform series present word factor under 1% monthly effective minimum attractive rate of return for 60 months is 44.955. The single payment present word factor under a yearly effective minimum attractive rate of return of 12.68% for five years is 0 0.5505 and the present value of the uniform series for five years under the yearly effective minimum attractive rate of return for 12.68 percent is uh, the, the factor is 3.5449 and by plugging in these factors into the above formulation the present value under 
the um, minimum attractive rate of return of nominal 12% of minimum attractive rate of return is $69,511 approximately. So this means the investor who expects a nominal minimum attractive rate of return of 12% that compounds monthly can purchase this house if the price is 69, less than $69,511.62, okay? If the price is less than that, then the 12% nominal minimum attractive rate of return objective will be achieved. However, if the price is greater than that, even though the investor purchases this house and still makes a profit, that profit is not going to achieve the 12% nominal minimum attractive rate of return objective, okay? So under the investor's minimum attractive rate of return, the fair market of this product is $69,511.62. Okay, again, you can make your readings from the reading assignment regarding to this chapter, and we are going to meet in the next week's uh, asynchronous uh, video lectures.